Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my presentation uh, on uh, semi-supervised teeth segmentation uh, from 3D scanned dental arches. Um, my name is Amar Ashegri and uh, I would like to thank Barbara for introducing me. I'm working with Professor Francois Gibou and Professor Farida Sheri. Uh, at Polytechnic Montreal. Before I start, I would like to uh, thank the uh, funding from Ivado, uh, who, who awarded me like a postdoctoral fellowship to carry on this project. So uh, I would like to uh, just a second. Okay, I would like to start with the outline of my presentation, which will uh, start with an introduction on the segmentation of 3D dental arches. Then I will present some literature on the topic, the objective of this talk, the methods that I used, and then some preliminary results. And then I will conclude and provide some insight for future work. So uh, what is dental arch segmentation? Here in this picture, we can see a scan of a dental arch. And segmentation of a dental arch means to label each tooth and gingiva separately. So we would like to provide a semantic segmentation giving the correct label of every tooth and distinguish, distinguishing teeth from each other and from the surrounding gingiva. And this is in fact important for applications such as crown generation, diagnosis and treatment planning. To give you an idea, the market size of dental crowns in North America is expected to pass $4 billion by 2025. And the teeth segmentation is an essential step to create context for crown generation. And in fact, advances in digital dentistry have allowed manual segmentation using commercial software such as Exocad, but it's time consuming for technician, which increases cost. So the variability of scanned dental arches is high, and that's what's causing challenges for automatic and accurate teeth segmentation models. In literature, teeth uh, arches are treated as non-Euclidean data. This means that arches are not composed of regular 2D grids such as 2D images, but rather they are represented as point clouds or as 3D meshes that are composed of vertices uh, that are connected by edges to form triangles as seen in this picture. And one of the state-of-the-art studies and models has, that has been published recently is the mesh signet that treats dental arches as an input and outputs, as you can see here in this network, a classification for every tooth on the dental arch. However, the mesh signet lacks generalization and cannot handle segmentation of cases with missing teeth, irregular teeth, or preparations. Here is an example in the picture that shows a prediction of a ground truth using the mesh signet model. And you can see in the picture, for example, tooth number 14 is a preparation that a dentist prepares to receive a crown. And in the prediction of the model, we can see that the, label, the labeling of the preparation was not done accurately. And also due to the fact that the dental arch is missing some teeth, that is very clear because we can see some uh, empty gingiva. We can see that the labeling of other teeth on the right side of the arch is mixed, which means that there is no correct labeling on the teeth because of the missing tooth on the arch. So the problem is generalization. And how can we generalize our training or our models? One idea is to increase the amount of variable labeled training data. This will require hiring more technicians to provide ground truth labeling for, for this additional data. However, this will increase our cost. An alternative idea could be to use a small amount of labeled training data and add to that a large amount of unlabeled additional data and then use self-supervised training to leverage this data. This will avoid an additional cost. So we can frame the objective of this talk as to explore the use of self-supervised training of large unlabeled data with supervised training of few labeled data to improve generalization of teeth segmentation deep learning models. So what is self-supervised training? In fact, unlabeled data still contain a lot of information that we can leverage automatically to create some training loss to learn useful representation. And this is the idea of self-supervised learning, is to use unlabeled data to train deep learning 
networks by solving tasks that do not require human annotation. An example is uh, shown in this picture where a recent work focused on learning unsupervised representation of 3D shapes using tasks such as clustering. And in recent work, there has been shown that uh, in the case of limited labeled data, including self-supervised losses with supervised training uh, improves the semantic segmentation result. So for example, you can see in this picture that the se semantic segmentation of the airplane, for example, when we add self-supervised training is closer to the ground truth compared with just purely supervised learning. So let's imagine that we have a data set X and this can be divided into like labeled data and unlabeled data. And let's suppose that we can create some k-means clustering of this unlabeled data using uh, some unsupervised technique. So then we can learn some loss on the features of this uh, clustered data such that we can compute a total loss that we can call it semi-supervised loss, which could be composed of a loss coming from the supervised training of labeled data and the self-supervised training of clustered unlabeled data. Here, lambda is a relative parameter that cont controls the relative strength of the two losses with respect to each other. And then we can modify our network to extract the features before computing a softmax and then computing our self-supervised loss on these features of the clustered data. And this self-supervised loss is computed in a way that encourages points belonging to the same cluster, the yellow points in the picture, to be to have high similarity. And points belonging to different clusters, such as the yellow point and the uh, orange point, uh, because they belong to different clusters, the loss will encourage them to have lower similarity. And that's how we learn the uh, on self-supervised uh, training. So. In this talk, I will be presenting two models. The first model is a model trained on uh, five labeled arches in, in purely supervised manner. And here by ideal, I mean arches that do not contain missing teeth or irregular teeth or preparations. And model two will be trained on the same five labeled arches, but we will add additional non-labeled data and leverage self-supervised training on this data to add to our loss. And then we will perform testing on two different data sets. One data set that has uh, one test data set that has five ideal arches and one test data set that has six non-ideal arches. And in the result, we can see that uh, a semi-supervised training improves the results of uh, segmentation uh, as it yields a higher uh, dice similarity coefficient, which is the metric that we are using to do the comparison in both test groups for ideal arches and for non ideal arches. And here's a visual example of an ideal arch that we can see for teeth number 13 and 12. The pure supervised training did not provide correct labels for these two teeth. But when we add self-supervised training, we can see that the labeling enhances a little bit compared with the uh, purely supervised training. Here's another example for an ideal arch. We can see here that for teeth 22, 23, and 26, the purely supervised training provides mixed labels, incorrect labels for these uh, three particular teeth. But when we add the self-supervised loss, the labeling of teeth 22, 23, and 26 is more closer to the ground truth. So in conclusion, we can see that uh, combining representation obtained from unsupervised learning with supervised learning seems to improve generalization of deep learning models for 3D tooth segmentation in the case of few available labeled data. However, we still need to better understand the effect of self-supervision so that we can uh, provide more studies on parameters such as the number of clustered arches used for the training or the number of clusters per arch. With this, I end my uh, talk, and I would like to thank uh, Evado again for providing me with the postdoctoral funding, my supervisors and uh, colleagues and collaborators, and other supporting organizations. Thank you very much.